What's up guys, T-Mark here, and today I wanted to make a quick video kind of walking through and comparing the two new controllers for the next-gen system. So as you guys can see, we've got the PlayStation 4 controller and the Xbox One controller. So I just kind of want to show you guys these controllers. If you haven't had hands-on, you really haven't seen like a close, in-depth video, there actually are quite a few changes to each of these that I wanted to show you guys and just, you know, kind of show you what you can expect depending on which console you get. So, uh, these are what they look like when they're brand new, you know, unopened out of the box. I bought one extra one for each console because I like having two controllers in case I need to make a video with two players or something like that. But uh, these are the controllers out of the box. So this is the Xbox Day 1 Edition controller. This one actually says Day 1 2013 in the middle of it. If it's not a Day 1 controller, then it's just going to be black in the middle of that. But uh, yeah, these are the two controllers. As you can see, they're very, very similar to their predecessors. Like they're just, they're a little bit evolved to this new version. They're, I mean, they're good, but they feel pretty much the same as the old ones. Starting off with the PlayStation 4 here. We still have all the same basic buttons. We've got the D-pad over here. We've got the two analog sticks in the middle along with the PS button. Now we actually have a speaker inside the controller, which is really, really cool. So in certain games that take use of this feature, like say a bullet goes by your head, you could actually hear it on the controller. Now obviously if you play with a headset, you usually aren't gonna hear things like that, but it kind of enhances the experience, makes it a little bit more realistic. Uh, now up top, we've still got R1, L1, R2, and L2, uh, but now, they're more like triggers. They push in more, they've kind of got more of a curvature to them. They act more like triggers and they feel a lot better, at least R1 and R2. Uh, I mean, R R2 and L2 do, I'm sorry. R1 and L1 still feel about the same, but you know, those are, they don't have to feel like triggers. These two are what should feel like triggers and they do, so that's really cool. Now also, uh, up front, instead of start and select, we now have options and share. So options is pretty much your start button and share is the button that you use if you want to live stream or if you want to, you know, record your gameplay or, you know, take screenshots and things like that. Now, uh, up top here, we have a little kind of like micro USB looking connector port that you connect to the PS4 via USB to charge the controller. And then this thing right here is an LED light bar that can be a bunch of different colors like red, blue, white, things like that. And it will change colors depending upon which you know control it is like first person should be white and second person is red and third person is blue you know things like that so it's uh it, it's kind of cool that it works that way so you can see which control is which and then also it it also acts as a health bar in some games like on kill zone when you get shot this thing will glow red so that's how you know it kind of indicates your health which is pretty cool uh, also in front we've got uh, the X, circle, triangle, and square, which you guys all know and love. And then finally, this touchpad here is actually a clickable button. So there aren't many games that really make a lot of use of this yet. Like in Battlefield, this pulls up like your battle log or something like that. In Call of Duty, it pulls up the score menu. It's just, you know, I don't think any games have truly taken advantage of this thing yet, but I'm sure they will in the future. So uh, that is the new PlayStation 4 controller. It's really nice. I really like the analog sticks on this controller. They're my favorite analog sticks out of any controller ever made. Uh, I wish I had a control freak on them, but just in terms of like smoothness and there's no dead zone or anything, they just, they, they feel really, really good. So uh, I didn't really like the PS3 controller all that much. I felt like it was too small, but just in general, this controller is designed a little bit better. It's almost the same, but there's some better curves in it and it just, you know, it just, it feels a little bit bigger. It's a little bit better laid out and, and the triggers definitely make a big difference. So that is the PlayStation 4 controller. Now, moving on, Let's take a look at the Xbox One controller. So this thing is, again, you know, it's pretty similar, but it's also got some new differences. So on the back side, this is actually where you put the batteries in. You just slide this thing up. It still takes AA batteries. So if you're a batteries guy, that's a good thing. If you'd rather have rechargeable, you know, you can put rechargeable batteries in here if you want. And I'm sure they might be coming out with like a, uh, a wired version soon. You know, I'm not really sure what their plans are for that. But uh, yeah, that's what we have uh, at this point in time. Now, as for the buttons, they're all the same. Nothing's really changed. So you've got a D-pad, you've got the two sticks, which I think the thumb sticks, like the face of them, is too small on this controller. I think it's too small. My thumb seems to slip off a little bit. One thing I do like is they have kind of like a, uh, uh, I don't even know, a rough edge, maybe you could call it, around the outside of the thumb stick, and then a soft one on the inside. So your fingers do kind of stick to it a little bit better, but I still feel like my fingers are going to fall off because the, the, the kind of face of the thumb sticks are so small, but I'm sure control freaks will help out with that but uh, you know other than that it's pretty much all the same X Y B A the two buttons here I don't even know what these are called anymore this looks like it's the um, 
Uh, I, actually, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I know what these mean anymore, but they have the same functions as the old uh, forward and back buttons on the Xbox controller, the 360 controller. Up top here is the uh, the guide button, and this is really weird. Like, it's kind of hard to get used to because I'm used to going to the guide button and pressing right here. You know, that's kind of where we used to go, but now it's all the way up top, so it takes a while to get up there. So, uh, you know, that's kind of unfortunate, but it's just something that we'll have to get used to. Uh, and then also, Kind of on the same boat there, the bumpers are also a lot higher than they used to be. Like, this controller feels better when you're holding it. It feels much more natural. And the Xbox 360 controller already felt really natural, but this feels really good, especially for people with big hands. But one thing that I don't like as much, or just, you know, something I kind of need to get used to, is the bumpers are a lot higher. Like, I'm used to just barely tapping the bumpers like that, just barely moving my finger. But now you have to really get this thing up there to uh, to push it. But overall, it does feel better. The, the curves and angles and stuff on the back side. Apparently they spent a lot of time kind of perfecting that and it's hard to explain. It's kind of hard to show in a video but when you hold the controller in your hands you will kind of feel that this thing just kind of like morphs to you. Like I feel like you could freaking have Adrian Peterson come up and try to rip this thing out of my hand or Jared Allen or somebody and they couldn't do it because I've got such a good grip on this thing. But uh, anyway yeah so uh, that's new controller. It does look like it's got some sort of port up here which I'm not sure if that's to make it wired or not. I don't know. We'll have to look in that. If you guys know, let me know. And then also, one thing I want to show you guys is the port down here is new. It's their own kind of like uh, port that uh, I think they're going to start licensing out to headset companies and stuff. So uh, if you already have Astros or any other type of headset, I don't think it's going to work on the Xbox One as of now. They might come out with adapters, but I'm not sure. The PlayStation 3, or the PlayStation 4, I'm sorry, still has that regular like 2.5 or 3.5 millimeter jack, whatever it's called. So that, I think, will work. I haven't tested out the chat actually yet. Let me know if you guys have. But, but I definitely know it won't on the Xbox One as of now because this is their own uh, connector that they've kind of patented and I'm sure they'll license out and have their own official headsets. But as of now, uh, I, I don't think current headsets will work on the Xbox One. So uh, there you guys have it. That is the... Um, the, the two controllers for the next-gen consoles. We got the PS4 and the Xbox One. They're both redesigned. They both feel a lot better. I think I still like the, the feel and the size of the Xbox One controller, but I definitely prefer, for, prefer the thumbsticks and the triggers of the PS4 controller. So they both got their ups and downs. If you guys like the PS4 or the PS3 controller, then the PS4 controller is going to be amazing for you because it's pretty much the PS3 one with some improvements. If you guys like the Xbox 360 controller before, the Xbox One controller it isn't going to let you down. There's just some things to get used to in, in the layout. So, and with that, you guys, have, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them down below and I will answer you. Thank you all for watching. A bunch of great ghost videos and PS4 videos and Xbox One videos and all kinds of stuff coming soon. Uh, so I'll catch you guys later. Check out the other two videos if you haven't seen yet. Peace out, guys.